Welcome to this week's Forex forecast for the week ending March 17th, 2023. My name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action. And in today's video, we are going to cover the US dollar index, the DXY, the Euro, the pound, the dollar versus the yen, and also the dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Now, before I get started, if you have not grabbed your free copy of the swing trading course I put out recently, be sure to visit the website, click that free course link. If you're here on YouTube, I will put a link in the description. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in to the DXY, the US dollar index. So last week on Friday with non-farm payroll, we saw the market sell off aggressively from that 105.60 area. Okay, so you can see that back here, this has been a key area for the DXY for the last few months. And we saw a retest here. Now, the market did close just slightly above it. Um, however, this level comes in right at 105.63, and this close on Wednesday was right around 105.65. Okay, so that is way too close to call it a breakout. Um, basically still acted as resistance here for the DXY. And Friday's move retested range support down here at 104.12. Okay, so we're going to call this 104.10 down here. And you can see where the market did bounce from that on Friday. Now, the short-term uptrend here is technically intact as long as the DXY stays above this level on a daily closing basis. If it were to lose this, then we are looking at potentially 103.50 and 102.60 as key supports on the way down. And if we get that close above 105.60, as I've said recently, okay, close up here, flip this area to support, we're probably looking at a move back toward 107.80, which is this pivot from back here. You can see it was support and it flipped to resistance back here in November. All right, so a very range bound market for the dollar um, so far with it holding above 104.10 last week. Now, I will say that this right here, the fact that the dollar couldn't hold above this previous range high up here, even though I would say that the range is, or the range resistance here is 105.60, the fact that the market did uh, close back below this high back here isn't a great look for the dollar. Okay, so we could see some weakness here, but again, the market is going to have to get below that 104.10 area on a daily closing basis to open up some lower levels. So a very range bound market here. Keep this in mind when you are trading the major currency pairs this week. All right, so next up we have the Euro USD, which um, last week I talked about a potential head and shoulders um, here on the daily time frame. Now you can see where this is the neckline down here around 105.40. And the market never did close below this. Okay, so we never got confirmation of this potential head and shoulders. Now, the one thing I talked about too last week is that it's not the best pattern I've seen I mentioned this to members um, just because the shoulders are so shallow, okay? It does still technically qualify um, at least as a potential pattern, but again, the market would have to get below this trend line on a daily closing basis, which you can see that it did not do last week on Wednesday, okay? So as of right now, this is unconfirmed. And also as of right now, this is going to be key support for the Euro. So resistance we saw tested on Friday with NFP. Um, you can see a you know big rally here on Friday. However, the market did come into that 1.069 resistance level, which has been near-term resistance for the euro. So essentially, like the DXY range round market for now, um, the euro would have to get below this level down here, uh, right around 105.40 on a daily closing basis to expose some lower levels like this pivot right down here at around 1.044. And alternatively, if we get the close above this area here, we do have this level up here to consider. So not a lot of room if we do get the break to the upside here. Okay, because 1.076 is going to come into play if we do get the break higher. Now above that, we have 108.50, giving us a little bit more room, um, but it is very tight conditions here for the Euro if we do get the break to the upside and even the downside, to be honest. Um, but the upside is gonna be a little bit tricky just because the market has been so sideways here over the past few months that we do have a lot of key levels to consider. All right, so not the most favorable chart right now. We'll see how this plays out, how it resolves if we do get the close above this area here next week um, or if we get the close below this potential neckline around 105.40. So next, let's talk about the pound, which gave us a potential fake out last week. So on the blog last week, what I mentioned was this range here at 1.1915. This is the bottom of that range. And we can see that here on Thursday, the market closed just barely above it. Um, however, it was a little bit too close to call. And you can see on Friday with NFP, we did get a very convincing close back within this range. Now, the market also closed back within that multi-month range that we've seen with support coming in at 
So with this move on Friday, um, you know, the thing I will say about this and, and really everything out there is that Friday moves can be deceiving. Okay. I'm not saying that this one is, but Friday moves can be deceiving just because of the lack of volume in the market. So here's what I would say for the pound. If it can get above this short-term trend line, so off of this high up here, if it can get above this on the higher time frames, all right, which it has not done yet, if it can get above this this week, then we could have something, you know, for a move back here. Now, keep in mind too that the mid-range for GBP USD is going to come in right up here in this area. Okay, so this region up here, you can see it has been a pivot for the market. This is going to be the one, the one to watch if we do get the move higher. Okay, so if we get the breakout here, you're going to want to keep an eye on this area right around 1.22. That's going to be resistance. And then, of course, we have range resistance up here around 1.2445. All right, so a potential reclaim for the pound. Um, you know, this could be bullish. However, once again, the market does have to get above this resistance level. And also, if I flip back to DXY, guys, this is where you have to pay attention to the US dollar index because it is still a range round market. So even if we see relative strength from the pound, the DXY is still going to matter when you're trading the major currency pairs, even the pound. So next up, let's talk about the dollar yen, which is a little bit concerning with Friday's close because the market did close back below that short-term pivot around 135.38. Okay, so you can see here that this is the level that I've mentioned at 134.40. So as of right now, the dollar yen is holding above this. And this is going to be the must-hold level for bulls. If we see this breakdown this week, then I think we're looking at a more significant pullback for the dollar yen, potentially down here toward 132.90 uh, and maybe even 130.70. Okay, so that's going to be the must-hold level for the dollar yen. Now, the market did close below this level, and we also have a potential ascending channel here. Okay, it's best seen on the four-hour time frame where you can see we have several highs off of resistance up here. And so far the dollar yen is holding above that. You can see the four hour never did close below it on Friday. Okay, now at the same time though, we do have this short-term pivot right here at 135.38. So notice the high back here and we've got two lows. Okay, now Friday closed just below that. So that's gonna be something to pay attention to this week. If the dollar yen rejects from this area and we see bullish price action here on the four hour time frame, and we also start to get that close below this channel support and 134.40, then that could open up downside targets like that 132.90 or potentially even 130.70. Now, alternatively, if we see the dollar yen start to reclaim this level at 135.38, all right, on the higher time frame, start to reclaim that, then we're looking at a move back here toward um, this range around 137.90. But like I said, you know, even though it was a Friday move, Friday moves can be deceiving. Keep that in mind but we did see the market close back below 135.38 last week. So that is going to be the level for bulls to reclaim. Alternatively, break this area down here. And I do think we see lower from the dollar yen. And lastly, we have the dollar versus the Canadian dollar, which I have mentioned this one uh, several times here ever since January. And the first time I talked about it, the market was coming off of this trend line that goes all the way back to July of 2021. And you can see where we did get a double bottom right here from the dollar cat. Okay, so we saw, saw the double bottom here at the bottom of this triangle. And we also got the breakout right here, which I also mentioned um, as it was breaking out. Now I know a lot of members caught this one and you can see where we even got a second chance opportunity from this consolidation that formed. Okay, also discussed in Discord where you can see that the market formed this consolidation here. And then we got the breakout on this candle and the rest is history, right? We got a nice move from the dollar cat um, almost up here toward 1.388, which is going to be that key resistance level on the higher time frames. All right, so looking back to the daily time frame, you can see that this is the closing price from back here in October. And if we go out even further, okay, go all the way back here to this consolidation period, you can see that this is that 1.388 level. Okay, so that is going to be the one to watch this week. And you can see above that, this range resistance, this would be the next resistance if we see the dollar CAD close a day above 1.388. However, we are seeing a little bit of weakness from the dollar um, last week on Friday. So keep that in mind. All right. This is going to be a very significant level for the dollar CAD this week. So if we see some bearish price action from here, maybe a fake out above this level, then that could push the dollar CAD lower. 
back here towards support around 1.37. All right, I don't think that the market is going to break this on the first try. Maybe it will, but given the significance of this area, I do expect some type of pullback from 1.388. All right, so until the dollar CAD breaks above this, if it breaks above this on a daily closing basis, then your range is between 1.388 with support coming in around 1.37. Now, if over the coming weeks, the dollar CAD were to get above 1.388 on the higher time frames, then it does have a lot of room to run because like I said, the next key resistance is all the way up there around 1.4265. Okay, so this is the level to get above on a daily closing basis. But until that time, this is going to be a very significant resistance level and one that could trigger a pullback from the dollar CAD this week. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope it helped. If you enjoyed the content, if it was useful, be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. And don't forget to head over to the website to claim your free a copy of that swing trading course. All right, have a great weekend. The next time I talk to you will be in the crypto weekly forecast on Monday. So I will talk to you then. Take care.